Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Okay, listen here. You know, every time I do one of these stories, it just hit me right in my heart. And I want to share this with you because there is a crisis going on. Um, in America, and it's going to have to be addressed. We are dying from within, and this is an interesting article that was sent to me, and it's about heroin users surges addicting women and middle the middle class. Okay, heroin use is reaching into new communities, addicting more women and middle class users. As people hooked on prescription painkillers transition to cheaper illegal uh, drugs, a new report shows. The rate of heroin use doubled among women over a decade, according to the study released today by the CDC and, um, and Prevention, which compared data to the three-year period between 2002-2004 with the data between 2011 and 2014. Okay? Heroin use also grew by 60% among those with household annual incomes of at least $50,000 or more, close to the median household income in the United States. Heroin use grew by 62.5% among those with private insurance, an indication that the users were employed and financially secure. The report shows that heroin addiction can affect anyone. Um, and that report shows the heroin addiction um, has and will affect anyone. I'm sorry. And that's according to Leanna Wynn, Baltimore City Health Commissioner. Um, I can tell you from my experience in the emergency room that you cannot predict this addiction any more than you can predict who has diabetes. We see addiction in all walks of life. From a 60-year-old to teenagers, people of all races and men and women, most new heroin users are among young white men with low income. But CDC Director Thomas Frieden said that he's alarmed that the reach of heroin is expanding, a trend that could make it harder to fight this epidemic. We don't know. And we just know if we don't act now, we could lose an entire generation of people to addiction, to the streets, to jail, or to both. And this was said by Senator Edward Markey, a Democrat in Massachusetts. We need to devote the attention and resources at all levels of government to combat this crisis that is now leading to as many deaths as from gun violence or motor vehicle accidents. An estimated 500 and 517,000 people use heroin or were dependent on heroin in 2013, and that's nearly a 150, 150 increase. I said 150 percent increase, I'm sorry, since 2007. The Center for Disease and Control found this study. Drug dealers import far more heroin to the United States now that, than in past years, according to the Drug Enforcement Agency, the DEA. Federal agents seized about 4,840 pounds at the southwest border in 2013, four times the amount seized annually all together from the year 2000 and to, up until 2008. About 75% of new heroin users first became hooked on prescription opiates, a class of morphine-like drugs that include Oxycontin, Vicodin, Percocet, before turning to heroin. You know, and I want to say something about that because that is really true. And you hear a lot of people saying that, you know, I had surgery. I don't know, maybe maybe back here in 2009 or 99, one of them. I can't remember. Um, but I do remember after having that surgery being prescribed some real, real heavy um, 
pain medicine. And I ain't gonna lie, that pain medicine took me to cloud nine and made me feel so good. And it also covered that hole in my soul. Temporary though. Because by the time the doctor decided that, you know, he didn't want to prescribe them to me anymore, I still wanted them. And so I got them. And then I got them. I think I, I continued to use them about a year afterwards. So until I decided, hey, wait a minute. I'm looking for this stuff. This stuff, I need it. I'm getting up. I'm taking it in, in the morning. And it's like my day is not right unless I have it. That's when it began to worry me because I was like, wow, I didn't pick up an addiction. So I went through the process myself. And I'm not encouraging anybody to do this, but I broke my um, dose down. And I think it took me about maybe six months. I went to break them down in half, just break them down in half, and then half of that, and then half of that until I got down to five. When I got down to five, I broke the five in half. And, um, you know, would, uh, then two, then break the two in half until my body was actually weaned off taking this medicine because I knew I couldn't stop cold turkey, I would have went crazy. I would have been like some of these middle-class housewives that are going and robbing the pharmacist or going in there and trying to um, steal from the pharmacist. Except I would have been shot probably instantaneously. But that's neither here nor there. But to sit there and see these women... Um, and the same thing with men. So I don't want you guys to think I'm excluding you. I'm just saying addiction, period. If you find yourself in the thrones of addiction, let me just say this. You got to get help. And especially if you got children. Your children cannot see you in this capacity. Your, your children don't need to grow up watching the behavior of junkies. They just don't. Um, and that might sound harsh, but it that's what it is. You um, are damaging them beyond belief. When you see women that are stopped at the stoplight and they have overdosed and their children are in the back and they are laying across the front seat of the steering wheel, knocked out. The kids don't know if you dead or alive. All they know is they're saying, mommy, 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 and you won't move. And if you don't think that's trauma for a child, uh, I pity you, fool. I really do. If you don't think that's trauma. And so which brings me, I'm going to finish this story, but it's there's a crack that, you know, they're, they're trying to do something about this, this opioid uh, addiction. It says prescription opiates have become a gateway drug. There's no evidence that painkiller addicts switch to heroin because doctors are prescribing fewer opiates um, or because painkillers are harder to get. But that's what it seems like is happening. Uh, for a heavy user, a day's supply of Oxycontin, 280 milligram pills, can cost up to $60. $160, that is. A day's worth of heroin could cost just 40. And as the heroin addiction deepens, many users turn to the needles for a more intense high because at first they snort it. Um, I have an uncle. I'm surrounded by addiction. I have an uncle who was shot in the head and he couldn't remove the bullet and he never used drugs in his life until he got shot. He got shot. They didn't take the bullet out. Um, and he started snort, snorting heroin. He started snorting heroin to ease the pain of the addiction. I mean, the pain of of, uh, of the gunshot. And it became an addiction. Wow. So, you know, I'm saying that to say this this is this is a serious health issue. And karma is an unforgiving master. It's the same issue that you had no compassion for when the people were addicted to crack. 
it's the same thing except it's worse to tell you the truth sometimes the trap that the government sets for uh the black and brown end up affecting the white people in a more worse way because at least these guys are alive some of in the people some of the people that got caught in the drug and i know this might sound really horrible but some of the people got caught up in the drug game and into that war on drugs and they're still in jail right now they're alive um they're in jail but they're alive there's no coming back from a heroin overdose so these people are not even making it to the jail houses a lot of them are just dropping dead in the cars a lot of them are just dropping dead on the highways a lot of them think they can just get a bump before they get home and they're dead dying on the way home because the drug is laced with fentanyl this is sad and this is a mess and this is what i mean by a cesspool and what i mean by america circle in the drain what you gonna attack what are we gonna and then we gotta got the nerve to be attacking each other because see this is something that it has no color everybody is addicted to drugs i think the police should be checked I think every time they shoot somebody unarmed, I think you should. Because not only had he might have been upset because he had uh, uh, problems with his wife. Because you realize that the police officers have the highest uh, account of domestic violence. So the same thing they're arresting you for is what they're guilty of themselves. They have the highest count of alcoholism. Um, and so now I really want to know, are they on pills? And I think that each time that a officer shoots someone... He should be given a drug test. Okay? Just like every time a person, civilian, has an accident or whatever, you drug test them. These same things should be happening. Just because you're a police officer does not exonerate you from being a citizen. You're not that type of special citizen where you can be able to use drugs and stroke the streets, arrest people for the same thing that you are under the influence of, which I think is just pathetic. I told the story before about the cop and I that looked eye to eye as I saw him snorting cocaine. Okay. And that was a nightmare. So that's some, some other conversation. But I'm just saying, this is an epidemic in, a, in America. So you can just pick your poison. What do you want to die for? What, I mean, what we got all this cesspool of madness that's here. This activity that's above the the, the stillness and you can't attack it all you can't fix it all and i know that sounds sad but all you can do is fix yourself so if you're in the thrones of addiction i wish you well i wish you peace and i wish you the courage and the wisdom to get some help for yourself okay i i, I pray that for you i don't want to see anybody having this situation happen to them like this situation here that i want to share with you guys i'm not going to stay on here long with this one a boston man entered into a bathroom of a dunkin donuts to get high with his child in his care and he ended up overdosing fox news 25 uh reports that 26 year old christopher morrissey of boston went into the bathroom to take heroin he left his nine-year-old boy in his care to wait in the dining room. The boy eventually let the staff know that he had been his dad had been in the restroom for an unreasonably long time and could they help him get him out of there or see what was going on. That's when they entered the restroom, because obviously the guy locked the door and yada yada yada. The employees opened the door and find the guy lying there unconscious. Right now, my heart is extremely, well, I'm sorry for the heroin addict, but my heart is extremely goes out for the child. Because for him to have to witness that trauma is totally unfair. Totally unfair because it messed up his understanding and it set a pattern of trauma that resonated all through his spirit. It's going to change the course of his life. All because the adults, you know, haven't figured out how to way to get out of their shit. And that's a problem. 
911 was reportedly called immediately and emergency officials arrived and gave Morrissey some Narcan. Subsequently, he was dragged to a local hospital and then off to jail. The boy was placed in the care of his grandmother. Morrissey has been charged with endangering the welfare of a child and he was released on $2,000 personal recognizance bail. I'm hearing too many stories um, about this. And um, that's one of the biggest questions that we should be asking right now. America, as America goes, how are we going to get our kids and how are we going to get each other off of drugs? How are we going to stop this pill epidemic? How, you know, we're just making ourselves ripe for the enemy. You know, we're just making ourselves so soft for whatever. And um, I have to say we because I live here. <laughs> a lot of people get mad at me because like, you always say we in America. And I don't entertain those conversations because I'm an American. At the end of the day, I live in America. And what affects America is going to affect me. So I don't listen to that nonsense. I don't live on Pluto. You know, I know there's a spiritual, there's a natural law, and there's a spiritual law. And when you start crossing them, there's consequences to that. And we're in the thrones of it right now. We're in the thrones of it because this addiction problem in America is getting sadder and sadder by the day. And these children have to be involved, have to be in the house with these parents. You know, I know parents that are addicted to drugs. I knew parents whose children were removed because of addiction. And I'm surrounded by addiction. Like I said, I don't believe it's anybody hardly that goes to the doctor regularly and is not prescribed some kind of pill. So if you was to tell them that they were addicted, they would be like, no, I'm not. My doctor gave it to me. So but we got a problem here in America. And that's another reason why all this craziness is going on. Everybody is dope fans. Um, all right. I got to go. With that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share. Y'all know what to do. I'll see you next time in the mental house. Bye-bye.